side of Halo has always been a little bit more fast to use. In multiplayer, everything and anything can happen. Oh my god. Oh. We need to be either as good as Halo 2, and, and obviously that is our bar, is as, at least as good as better at this, that will be better. Enjoy your walk back yes. to the beach. <laughs> While you're working on the project, the bar is sort of a moving target. It can be intimidating, for sure. Typically, my morning starts with me weeping at my desk for about 30 minutes. And then I get to work. We've really gotten into hardcore, though, because to doing afternoon playtests. Okay, it's Territories, 15-second uh, respawn time. And it's become fundamental in how we're working on the game. Oh, Froman! Oh, they're so oh. close! From day one, people have been in there playing it, which really, really refines the gameplay. It was horrible there. Well, who broke territories? <laughs> I think Halo 2 multiplayer has been played like four billion times. Competing against yourself is stressful. Coming up with these scenarios that people play over and over again. Now, how can we rethink that and create something that's new and interesting? We started getting more into these asymmetrical maps. It's offense versus defense, where that's a choke point that you want to hold. And I think high ground is an example of that. Some of the specific things that we tried out were having a wall that you have to get past that sort of defined whether you won or lost the game. Then we stuck some towers in and we put AI gunners on all the towers. So as you're running up the hill, you're just getting tagged by all these AI guys. That's the direction that we went. We're like, whoa, that's way too hard. In this version, the wall is actually perpendicular to the hill. And in the final version of high ground, that wall has been rotated 45 degrees because it had two turrets up here as well as two turrets in the other tower. So there's a lot of firepower coming down on the hill. That got all simplified into one turret actually right above the gate, which I felt was not as brutal to the attackers. It's pretty obvious to us when, when we start working on these maps that they have to be fun for the hundredth and the, the two hundredth and the thousandth time. You weren't figuring out the switches in the doors? Yeah, the glows are cool. Like, you want to perform them. Like, watching people run through your map challenges a lot of the assumptions you made about it. Like, oh, I think people will use this hill for sniping. And then no one uses it. Then you get great comments like, this map sucks. Um, I hate this spot. I hate you. <laughs> a lot of the time that we spend on these levels are in the details. Making sure that the run to a weapon is equal for different areas. Getting the distances right for flag captures. Because we make such an effort to place uh, titled objects in a level, like the waterfall, the bridge, the porta potty, people can see the flag is down by the porta potty. That immediately helps with that social aspect. Production <laughs> was player movement, and that's where the man can came from. There's different ways to move the player around the map. In Halo 1 and Halo 2, we had these teleporters. Although it was a great way to get around quickly, it didn't provide as much inherent danger as the man cannon does. There's almost nothing more rewarding than sniping a guy out of the air as he's man cannoning across the map. Whatever weapon that you start off every round with is going to really affect the decisions you make. There's this thing we didn't really identify in Halo 2, that if you spawn everybody with a dual-wieldable weapon, like the SMG, it changed the game. People stop meleeing and people stop grenading, because when you're dual-wielding, you can't do either of those. One of our weapon modelers, Tom Doyle, said, hey, this is a great chance to bring back the assault rifle from Halo 1. The assault rifle's design language really works well with the Master Chief. It has such a unique kind of silhouette to it that we really didn't want to change with what is already a Halo cannon. But in terms of design and gameplay, uh, it's been adjusted uh, pretty considerably. The weapon has kind of a shallow clip, so it came down to how best do I use my melee attack or how best do I use my grenades in order to tip that fight a little bit over in my favor. The assault rifle works really well with the golden three things of Halo, which are weapons, grenades, and melee. The different 
kind of weapons that you get to use now, the way that they're balanced against each other, the way the weapons are placed on a map, and it brings a certain something to the map that just makes it play right. You have a situation which is very common, two guys get into a fight. Is there a way to mix that up? Say you start getting hit by a battle rifle from behind. Let's say you have a bubble shield, you drop it, all of a sudden you're completely shielded from this guy who's firing on you. Or the mine, and you realize a warthog is barreling towards you. You deploy the trip mine in the last second. So yes, the thing. you die, but you take out those damn bastards that just ran you over. When you are done as a group playing together, the first thing you want to do is talk about it. Every game you play, you're going to be having a safe film that you can stop time. Shoot camera angle. We watch them. Oh, look at that! It was sucks. I think being able to share it with your friends makes the smack talk even more powerful because it's not just, oh, I just shot you in the head from across the map. It's, I just shot you in the head and let's watch it in slow mo. It's really going to help people improve their play if they can see it from the enemy's perspectives. You'll be able to watch where they go, what weapons they pick up, in what order. We've done a lot of paper, we have all the specs, but there's a significant part of that that's not yet finished. The big challenge ahead of us now is to make sure that we get everything that we can in the game. We're going to be what we're going to be, and we think it's, we think it's really good, but everybody's expecting it to be really good, so we got to beat those expectations somehow. That's what's tough, yeah. That's what makes me cry at my desk.